Assassin's Creed Unity is the latest game to be reviewed, pumped by Steam users, but perhaps not in the way you expect. French developer Ubisoft offered the game out far free last week, following the devastating Notre Dame fire, and donated over $500,000 to help restore the damaged monument. As some of you might remember, Unity is set in 18th century Paris, and features a faithful recreation of the Notre Dame, allowing those who took advantage of the promotion to see the historic cathedral in all of its glory. It's a gesture that evidently went down well with fans, who, we since been bombarding the game's Steam page with positive reviews and messages of thanks, as the graph below shows. Those gratitude grenades, that's the opposite of a review bot. Folks have left the game with a recent review rating of very positive compared to its overall mixed rating. Thanks Ubisoft and Assassin's Creed Unity for giving us an opportunity to appreciate what Notre Dame used to be. God bless France, wrote one user, while others posted messages like, Good IUB and Amazing game, amazing company, perfect. It's a wholesome story that shows the positive power of video games. Although it will be interesting to see whether Valve's new review system eventually wipes out Unity's recent reviews far being off topic, as it did when PASTBORDIA RELAY and DS titles were bombarded with negative reviews at the start of the month. One Anthem developer discusses their time working on the game with Kotoku. Kotoku has published a story that collects the experiences of 19 developers that were involved in the development of BioWare's latest release Anthem, in some way, working through what many of those devs describe as a rocky development, plagued by issues from the start. Dissecting a major release like this is rarely as cut on the dry as what went wrong, but still some of the anecdotes shared by the anonymous developers interviewed for this story offer a look at how issues encountered in different parts of development can wear on a team and affect the work they set out to do. Some of the early issues by aware developers say hit the game main sound of the media to fellow game developers and simply came from investing significant time and work into ideas that, once implemented, were not actually that fun. Flying on traversal were changed several times. Because of this, changes that required more changes to the level design each time, and procedural encounters were eventually scrapped, because the game was super reliant on this procedural system that just was not fun. In some cases, that say the internal issues with these frostbite engines of town features have made them more difficult to implement since the in-house engine had not been designed with those in mind. According to one developer interviewed, part of the trouble was you could do enough in the engine to hack it to show what was possible, but then to get the investment behind it to get it actually done took a lot longer, and in some cases you run into a brick wall, then you do realize, oh my god, we can do this only if we reinvent the wheel, which is going to take too long. It was sometimes difficult to know when to cut and run. In other cases, developers said there were several times where they participate in long meetings on how to approach and overcome certain issues, but would wrap up without any deciding on any course of action. That would just happen over and over. Stuff would take a year or two to figure out, because no one really wanted to make a call on it, said an anonymous Anthem developer. The full story on Kotaku is a lengthy red field with many similar experiences but one that documents many unfortunate parts of game development, and the storms that a developer that by aware had to weather and overcome to get Anthem out the door. By aware and E, both declined to comment, while Kotaku's story was being researched.
but the farmer released a statement after the fact noting that it had decided not to comment because it did not want to be part of something that was attempting to bring specific team members and leaders down as individuals. In that statement, which can be read in full on the BioWare blog, BioWare says that crunch has not been a major topic of feedback in our internal post-mortems, and that leadership does everything we can to try and make it healthy and stress-free. But we know there is always room to improve in that response. BioWare says that it does not see the merit in articles that publicly documented shoots face the best stuff through a long development and does not think articles that tear down one another are one another's work are making other industry and craft better. The Seer Studios released its horror-themed platform Adventure Little Nightmares last month. It follows a young girl called Six as she tries to escape a huge vessel known as the Moor. She's chased by the monstrous that found guests on board, who are much larger than her, forcing her to hide in crawl spaces and climb up shelves to out of reach places. She also has to battle an insatiable hunger that growls in her stomach every now and then, which forces her to feed on anything she can find. Tarsier has been ruminating on the ideas that went into Little Nightmares. For the past 14 years, this game feels like it's been bubbling up in us ever since the company's been around, says Dave Nervik, Little Nightmares, senior narrative designer. It goes all the way back to 2004, when a bunch of talented students in Lund, Sweden, were working on an adventure game called The City of Natural Knowing. The game earned some decent attention. Even getting an announcement trailer show at E3 2005, due to its dark themes, a new world gameplay, and bizarre visual designs, something it shares with its successor, Little Nightmares. The city of Natural Known took place in a city where children are kidnapped, their soul is sucked out, and they are forced to work to keep industrial machines ticking. The main character is made to question this normality by a young girl and goes on a quest to unravel the mysteries of the corporation in charge. He works his way through the city by recording sounds in the environment with the device on his back and then changing their pitch so that the same sound can be both soothing and aggressive. When played back, Different types of sound have different effects on characters and parts of the world, either preventing or allowing progression. Unfortunately, the city of Metro Nome was never finished and remains as merely a promising prototype to this day. To make it into a full game would have needed more time, more people, and more money. So it was just an unfortunate case of having the right idea at the wrong time. Says Mervik, that kind of game, though, never left our thoughts. It's always been a natural fit for us to make games in this kind of world, telling this kinds of stories. So, although there's no literal link between City of Natural Nomad and Little Nightmares, they both came from the same minds. So they have shared DNA. Nervik joined the team at Dawson seven years ago because he wanted to make the kind of game that the city of Natural Known promised to be. But before that could happen, Dawson had to build itself up as a company and to do so it struck a deal with Sony. From 2008, the company worked on DLC and console ports. Are the PlayStation exclusive LITTLABIGPLA any days a reason tear away, and a couple other PlayStation 3 titles. As the team at Dossier was finding its groove as a studio in those years, gaining experience as a more established production house, they began to think about what their first original game might be. As it happened, the transition to Sumo Digital. As the developer of LITTLABIGPLA, any day coincided with the point 
where we had a clear vision aware of a future lay, so the timing felt about as good as it would ever get, says Mervik, still, leaving the security of being a Sony exclusive studio, to be out there on our own, was a hard mixture of exhilaration and abject terror, but we could not have dreamed of a better way to take that first leap. There were a number of ideas floating around the studio about what that first original game might be, but the earliest was spawned from a dollhouse tech demo made in 2012, with the cylindrical building as its focal point. It gave players the ability to pan, rotate, and zoom into a bunch of individual, interconnected rooms and managed to feel both playful and downright creepy. Lurvik wrote on the PlayStation blog, It was a simple premise, but one that captured our imagination. The dollhouse, tech demo, that tech demo would serve as the car of little nightmares. What the team liked about its camera view was that it was limiting enough to not let players fully grasp their surroundings and know how close they were to danger. We want it to feel like you could almost reach into the rooms and touch things. But maybe also wonder whether you should. There was lots that we liked about that sensation. Things that married well with the feelings we wanted to create in the player. Says Mervik, the way that a doghouse is both familiar 